Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy Peter Liu, Real Wheel Deal. And today I have with me a JDM icon, a JDM legend, the Spoon Sport SW388. One of the most iconic wheels to come out in motorsport history. Before we continue onwards, I want you guys to know that I'm making these wheel videos for a greater part of a decade. So if you guys could help me out, hit subscribe above and uh, turn your notifications on for when new videos come out. I don't make a ton of videos. I only make them for wheels that I think are important. So make sure you guys keep watching and make sure you guys hit the thumbs up under. So before we get started, I'm just gonna do a little short history on Spoon Sports before we get into the wheel. There's lots of resources online, lots of videos about Spoon's history. Uh, one of the ones I like a lot is Donut Media. So if you wanna learn more about Spoon's, you know, check them out. They have a really good history on Spoon Sports. But basically the company was founded in 1988 by a gentleman named Tatsuru Ichishima. And what he was, was was a factory back Honda racing driver and test driver. He was really, really passionate about motorsports. And then he wanted to start his own company, a little bit of racing team. And actually he had the backing of Honda's main company and also Mugen Tuning, which we also know. And in exchange for them backing him, he would have to exchange racing data back to them that he would have gained and used during his racing career for them to further develop their parts and their cars. So since inception, Spoon Sports definitely was focused on racing. Spoon's actually named after a famous corner in Suzuka circuit. It's between, I think, turn 13, 14. It's shaped kind of like a spoon. Corner is a very important corner. If you take that corner wrong, it could make or break your race or your lap times on Suzuka. So since then, that set the philosophy of the company being really focused only on racing and only building the best racing parts available. So going racing, you have to kind of go after the highest quality of racing parts you can get. And Spoon, through their testing and their racing knowledge, they've actually commissioned a lot of some of the best and biggest tuners in the world to make a lot of their parts. So Total Racing makes some of the parts for them. If you look at their steering wheels and stuff, they're made by Momo Italy. This wheel, when it came out, was no different. This wheel was commissioned by Spoon out to Desmond, which was a company that used to exist they re-exist again now, but they're actually looking to achieve the lightest aluminum wheel in the world. So Spoon sought out Desmond to create this wheel. And after two years of heavy development, this wheel was created. It was called the Spoon SW388, SW being like spoon wheel and 388 being 3.88 kilograms. So if you remember, the TE37 is 3.7 kilograms, but that was originally in a 15 by six. This spoon wheel, 15 by six and a half, 3.88 kilograms. Based on the numbers that we have on the chart, the TE37, that 15 by six, if we had gotten to a six and a half, it'd be actually closer to four kilograms. So potentially the spoon wheel at 3.88 kilograms is technically lighter than the TE37. So the end product was they did achieve their mission, making the lightest aluminum wheel possible, made in conjunction with Desmond, and what's crazy is the wheel was actually forged in Russia. There's actually a rumor that it was actually an old weapons factory. So essentially if this wheel was forged in a weapons factory, this wheel is actually a weapon, a track weapon. So this wheel after two years of development came out in 1994. They say that it's being produced for a couple of years. And all of a sudden in 1999, Desmond unexpectedly shuttered their doors, which ended the production of this legendary wheel. Up to that point, the wheel had gained a lot of recognition on the circuit. Everyone had known how well this wheel was doing and this five spoke design became iconic. So in that time, it's lore, it's legendary status has kind of elevated while the wheel was unavailable. So wheels bought in the aftermarket industry or after sales industry was actually going really, really high. The wheels really sought after because of its limited availability and because of its use as a racing wheel, wheels were being destroyed, used on circuit, while no, no new wheels were being created. During its production run, they introduced other sides of the wheels, of course. Going bigger and larger, they started doing a lot of different applications for many different vehicles, different PCDs too, not just the 4x100 Honda is known for, but they started doing a lot of different ones. So that's why when you look at a Honda tuning game where you go to, I don't know, like Wackfest now, SW388, iconic wheel on many makes of Hondas because they've started started making them in many different sizes. So for 20 years, the Honda fanboys have been hoarding these wheels, which further made its legendary status. And of course, I think Spoon no longer could wait. Essentially, the JDM gods granted us some mercy. They reintroduced the Spoon SW388. But of course, with Desmond being a closed factory, they couldn't go back to Desmond in Russia to make them anymore. But instead, they went to a new company. And in my opinion, they went to further develop the wheel further improved the wheel and it went with Tynasia Co. So you might've seen my old video. I have a video on the Tynasia TWS T66F wheel. That company is actually really famous for making a lot of forged wheels, both in magnesium and aluminum for a lot of racing teams. They've done F1 wheels in the past. And now because they're like a private label company and they have their own line, a lot of high-end companies are seeking them to make wheels. So lately what they've been making besides their own wheels was if you've seen a new Mugen M2 re-release, that was made by them. The new Desmond Rega Masters are made by them. And of course, the new Desmond Rega Masters and this wheel share a heritage. So of course, this new SW388 was also made by them. 
So now when you get a set of these wheels, you look on the box, it says made in Japan. That's because this wheel, instead of being made in Russia, is now made in Tokyo in Japan in the Toyama prefecture. So now all these wheels 100% fully forged in Japan out of 6061 aluminum. So I need to jump a little bit because this wheel is a little bit dependent on Desmond Regamaster coming back. So if you guys don't know, the Desmond Regamaster is back. The Evo 2 has produced a new entity of Desmond, has commissioned Tanisia Co. to make their new Evo 2. Boone also commissioned Tanisia Co. to make their wheel, but because they're commissioned by two separate parties, the two wheels are not significantly different, but there are changes between the two. So I'm gonna go into the new Evo 2's history a little bit is that the new Evo 2 after development was debuted in 2018 at a A-Box Super Meet in the US. They've been pushing that wheel a lot. You've probably been seeing the new version Evo 2 appearing on a lot of cars. And what's special about the Evo 2 is actually they got the original designer of the original Rega Masters to design that one. Kazumi Yamamoto went back to the design board to redesign the new Desmond Rega Master Evo 2. And he's the father and designer of the original Evo, the MP, the Bright. And of course now he is the designer of the new one, the Rega Master Evo 2. And he might have some hand in designing this SW388. So this wheel is coming from the same factory as the new Rega Master Evo 2s. But I've been looking online, I found some sources and there are some subtle differences between the wheels. Well, the big differences are the faces they're saying. They're saying that the faces between the SW388 and the Evo 2 are different to counter for different kind of brake clearances, different kind of offset scaling. If you guys know about Hondas, Hondas kind of have a higher offset. So this wheel, they kind of designed the shape probably for the best maximal brake clearance and also best maximal performance once it's on application of a Honda. The other very obvious difference between this and the Regamaster Evo 2 is that this wheel, you can see it's in this matte black. So this matte black is fantastic finish. It's crazy how it's when I touch it right away, there's like some kind of fingerprints on it, but it looks so black, it absorbs all the light and you can really see like flexion to kind of see the different facets of the wheel. What's also special about this finish is this finish is anodized. So it's anodized similar to Volk Bronze and anodizing is special because it's actually a lighter finish than paint. So you're really, really chasing those grams. An anodized finish will give you way better weight savings than a paint finish. And the Spoon SW388 is doing anodizing, whereas the Regamaster Evo 2, they have really nice paint, but they have a lot of different paint colors. But if you want the Spoon one, this is the only color available. So with the new gen of the SW388, you definitely knew that they had to do all the applications available that they could. So of course they have the original 15 by six and a half which is where the 3.88 kilogram one comes from. Then they also did a wider one, 15 by seven. They do some 16s by seven and a half, 16 by eight and a half, do some 17 by eight, 17 by nine. So the 17 by eight ones, you know, good for maybe DC5, 17 by nine. We're kind of doing more like S2000 style fitment. With the modern Honda Civics and modern Honda vehicles, they have new sizes. So the one I have here is actually for a modern Honda. It's a 18 by nine and a half plus 40, five by 120 bolt pattern, which I'm sure sure Spoon's never done before. And that's for, of course, Civic Type R, FK8, and FL5. They also do a 19 in the same kind of uh, offset and bolt pattern because I think some people want 19s under Civic Type Rs. And I know they even have a 20. So I think that might be the largest SW388 available. And I don't think that's been done before. So with the revamp of the new generation, they've added a plethora of sizes to kind of suit our modern world, but also servicing the older Hondas and kind of vintage Hondas and the Hondas that Spoon really got famous for tuning and racing. So now that we kind of went through the little bit of history that I know about SW388, I want to do a deep dive on the wheel, kind of show you guys some close-ups and some features of the wheel. So very importantly, obviously it's a five-spoke wheel. So people would say that this is probably the most legendary, most iconic five-spoke wheel design. But I would say uh, the Advent GT is up and coming a lot. And because of already the Advent GT, they might be catching up Spoon to kind of see if they're going to be the king of five-spoke. But they reintroduced this, so now there's like an icon. Of course, we have this very triangular spoke, but the crazy thing is the spokes are very thin. Because the spokes are so wide and all the strength is in such a thick spoke, like width-wise, they were able to make the spokes super, super thin. So I think they kind of did a different thing instead of trying to thin spokes this way to save weight, they thin them this way. What advantage this does is it allows you to have supreme brake clearance. And Honda's being known for very high offsets and a brake coming out very far. I think the Rega Masters and the SW388s, they definitely had to make sure they had very, very good brake clearance. You kind of see there's this really sunken in cup here. The cup right in the middle of this wheel, very iconic as well. You see that deep, deep cup in the middle, you know right away it's uh, SW388. There's a lot of weight savings here. 
And the thing is, they also even cut on the edge here. So where the lug nuts would go, that's also cut off here. Instead of choosing to leave material and cut it down deeper, they've cut out the holes here. A very unique trademark of this wheel and also the Rego Masters is there's this little deep cutting on the edge here. This is really nice because it's black and this cut gives you like a little angle. Kind of looks like it's a relief. Uh, might be increasing surface area. Might be for just making it nice, but it looks really good. On a black wheel, super good. Dirt gets in there, not a big deal. Uh, my buddy, he has a white wheel, the Rego Master, the OG one so you know we're cleaning these and we got q-tips going in all of these so if you get the white ones giant pain to clean but a really cool design feature and the thing i kind of see is inside of here the cut is that there's a flat cut here it's big but then it only gets to here it goes narrower so it's not just a straight 90 degree angle there's a nice little smooth cut on here but it gets bigger as you go inside here so that's kind of unique and also there's a lot of relief cutting inside of here which kind of gives you a more of a dish look because now the wheel can go inwards here and then to add a dish so people really, really like the dish on this wheel that's available. And the other unique thing on the front here is the valve stem. Uh, the valve stem, I don't know why, normally just kind of hole in here, but there's like this little flat facet here. Got a whole bunch of dimensional cutting around the valve stem. So that's really unique to me as well. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the side. So on the side, what's new to this wheel is I have a little bit of knurled beading here. So they have this kind of raised up here and here which is very good for the communication of the tire on the wheel. But you'll also notice that there's also a couple extra little ridges here as well. So there's a ridge here, another ridge here, and also you got the big flange here. So there's a lot of really different areas for the tire to communicate on that wheel. So I think this extra little thick bead here, this is actually where the tire is gonna sit on it. So it's kind of cool that they kind of raise that middle part just for tire contact. I think having that raised a little bit there, it allows you to mount the tire but also because raised there, it contacts the tire really well so it comes back up. And that should aid you a lot in driver feedback and how close the tire is mounted to the wheel. You get a lot of good tire response up the steering wheel to the driver. So it's definitely very race orientated. Also because it's an anodized wheel, the finish is really matte. So I saw that they didn't have to cut away any paint here. It's just gonna grip it directly on that anodized finish. So now on the back, uh, like I said, no fuss behind the spokes, just as much flat and shaved off as much as possible to clear the brakes. The hub is where a lot of technology of the SW388 come from. It's machined really nicely, but what's crazy is the finish is so good, they don't actually have to cut away the finish. So most of the wheels you see me review is bare metal on the back here. It's still anodized all the way across. And what you might not know about the spoon wheel is why so many have survived for so long is because anodizing has way better anti-corrosion properties than painting. And because this is totally sealed here, Hopefully this stops corrosion even on the hub. So the wheel will kind of last longer and fatigue a lot less or having like that rust in there. Uh, not only is it fully anodized the back hub here, but you see they also have this cool cut here, which can do two things. Saves a lot of weight because you're cutting off metal. Second, you have space there for the stud if you decide to run spacers. So they took that into account to make sure that if you want to run some spacers, that you'd have a little bit of clearance from the original studs on that spacer in the back here. And the last little tidbit of magic they have here is you look at the hub is not completely flat. Inside of here, there's another cut ring. Why do they have that cut ring? They said it's for three reasons. The first one is they didn't want any contact to the hub because they said it just improves the fastening strength because they're bolting it up by the lug nut onto the hub. Apparently this little bit of flexing space here allows the wheel to move inwards a tiny bit upon bolting up and that gives it a lot of strength during mounting and another thing it also does is it actually says to prevent the lug nuts from loosening during racing another thing they said was with this space it also reduces the shock absorption of the knuckles and the hub because some of the shock absorption can be taken on here so it doesn't have to travel up and kind of like shock the suspension during racing it keeps the suspension more balanced so they say that that's why they have that relief cut on there some other important things on the back of course is our sticker so here you have your size pcd inset and date this is forged so this wheel was forged august 21st 2021 so this is a couple years old now and of course here I have my Titan Sia, they have their JWL VIA sticker that's applied to here. And the last thing that's completely new is of course inside here, they have an engraving inside the barrel. And this is definitely a Titan Sia thing. And this is VIA 690 kilograms, which is the load rating of the wheel. And here they actually engrave the specs, which you know they used to not do all the time, these real on barrel stickers, but this is 18 by nine and a half plus 40. Forge date is also engraved in here as well. This is August 21st. It says Japan. Forge in Japan now by Tanasia, and they have their own company name in here and a serial number. And if you have a size that's similar to the OG wheels, having this engraving will definitely differentiate which one's a new one and which one's an OG one. Next thing I gotta do is get this on the scale. I don't think it's gonna be the king of the lightest aluminum wheel in the world because of modern manufacturing factory techniques but we're getting on there see how light this wheel still is now wing it on top of raised wheels so jdm gods don't hate me got it zeroed out this is a hard surface and now we're gonna see so this guy is an 18 by nine and a half 
plus 40. So we're gonna check it out. Holy, that's crazy light. That's 16.8 or 17 pounds, which is ridiculously light. When I weigh off at 18 by nine and a half, PE37SL, the OG SL, it's around 18 pounds. And even the new Sega SL, probably over 18 pounds, closer to 19. This guy is 17 pounds. So this definitely is supremely light for that size. All right, so that concludes my in-depth review of the JDM Icon JDM Legend Resurgence Spoon SW388, the brand new generation of it, Back from the Dead. And I hope you guys really enjoyed all the information I had to pull up for the wheel. If you guys liked it, make sure you guys hit subscribe, comment below. I've been making these videos for a long time. Try really hard to make sure I bring different kinds of wheels to you guys. Because you guys might notice there's a trend on my channel, but I want you guys to know I try to do an unbiased review of every kind of wheel that's available. And you know, most importantly, it has to be a real wheel. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.